Hi guys, so I shared this Memorial Day piece uh, in a written format, but I figured I would just give you the audio just in case you're driving or, or something like that and you just wanna listen. So um, I wrote something that I'm gonna share now and it's called, Remember the US Public Health Service Commission Corps on Memorial Day. So it's Memorial Day, uh, May 30th, 2022 um, today. And a lot of people are um, taking the day to remember um, people who have served in the military. And um, sometimes people forget what Memorial Day is about. So Memorial Day is meant to honor those who have lost their lives while serving in the armed forces. So it's not, you know, just thinking a veteran or somebody who has served, that's, that's Veterans Day. So Memorial Day is really specifically meant to honor those who have lost their lives while uh, serving uh, in, with our armed forces. So I think we always need to remember that the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps, one of our eight uniformed services, has been militarized during many of the great wars. Uh, and accordingly, U.S. PHS officers have lost their lives. So just to quickly review the military history, the Public Health Service actually first entered uh, war during the Spanish-American War in 1898. And though the Commission Corps wasn't officially militarized by the president, which happened later on, uh, they did participate in the war. There were surgeons on boats in Manila Bay. Um, and so they were supporting the war effort um, directly by providing health care on those ships or just by um, protecting health of soldiers um, uh, during the war. But this event called into question the role of the public health service during wartime. So essentially the government didn't want to compromise the primary role of the public health service in protecting the nation's public health, but they still saw the value of the public health service during wartime and supporting the war efforts. So this was really a uh, pivotal moment to kind of define what is the role of the, of the public health service during wartime. So. Uh, legislation was established that gave the president power to militarize the public health service during times of war. And this happened in World War I, and then again in World War II, where again, the Public Health Service Commission Corps was officially militarized and made part of the land and naval forces. Um, and then it extended into Korea, and then uh, those um, powers by the president uh, then ended, or the, the president still has power to do it, but uh, the 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 core uh, essentially wasn't militarized anymore after Korea. So while not officially militarized by executive authority um, after Korea, um, public health service officers still have ser served on surgical teams in Vietnam and then in various hospitals and other missions during the Gulf War era. So again, not officially militarized, but still supporting war efforts uh, most recently. But again, when thinking about Memorial Day and um, that it's, you know, recognizing service members who've lost their lives uh, while serving in war, which is um, very specific, very different. Um, the last documented time that a public health service officer was killed in action was actually in World War II. So most PHS officers who served with the armed forces were with the Coast Guard. Um, some still served with the Army and Navy. And if I remember correctly, it's uh, a little bit more than 600 officers in the public health service were actually assigned directly with the armed forces. And then the rest of the commission corps were supporting the war efforts at home or, you know, providing support um, in other fashions. There's, there's a lot of ways to support the war effort back in World War II. But um, so most were with the Coast Guard. And during World, World War II, at least 14 officers died while in active duty. So six were killed in action, mostly while on Coast Guard cutters. There's actually a PHS surgeon, Harry M. Levin, who died while aboard the USSS Serpens. And his name is actually inscribed on a memorial in Arlington dedicated to the USSS Serpens. So the ship actually exploded while carrying a large amount of ammunition and cargo. Um, and it was considered the largest single disaster for the U.S. Coast Guard during World War II. There were um, also six PHS medical officers that were assigned to the Philippines during World War II. And uh, the officer in charge of this 
cohort, Dr. Howard F. Smith, he was actually reassigned to serve as a medical aide to General Douglas MacArthur. So uh, Surgeon General Thomas Perrin reassigned Dr. Smith from the Philippines to assist Dr. Or, uh, General MacArthur. And so he traveled with General MacArthur to various countries um, uh, during the war. But then after Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, the other five medical officers that were still in the Philippines, they were actually captured as prisoners in the Philippines. And two of them actually died as prisoners of war uh, um, while, you know, when they were captured. So that is Dr. Floyd W. Hawk and Fr uh, Dr. Fred Black. Um, and I have Dr. Fred Black's picture on PHS Proud's website in the article if you want to see his picture uh, there. So two officers died as, as POWs there. So um, so th those are some of the documented um, cases of PHS officers losing their lives um, while serving with the armed forces. And really that's what Memorial Day is about, is really remembering those who, who died while serving with the armed forces and, and making that sacrifice. And so again, I think it's really important to remember that uh, the Commission Corps has served in many of, of the great wars that the United States has had, and they've accordingly have died uh, while serving during those wars. Uh, one thing I think is interesting to think about, though, is what about officers that have died in the field while fighting the, quote, silent war against disease? So I think it's interesting to think about a quote that uh, Public Health Service Assistant Surgeon Milton Rosenow uh, once wrote. And, and I'm going to read the quote here. So here's a quote. He once wrote, and, and Rose now was an officer in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So just to kind of give you an idea of the time, this is when we were really battling and understanding bacterial diseases and infectious diseases like plague. But he wrote, the doctor who battles against the microbe is not as picturesque or as romantic a figure as the soldier who dies fighting on the field of battle though each may be fighting to save his country against an invading foe. Bacteria are as deadly as bullets, and many a medical officer has fallen from the infection of disease and saving his fellow man. So I think this is a really powerful uh, piece or quote that, that he has. And it's true. Just as an example, uh, there was a medical officer named Thomas McClintock, who actually has a, a quarantine tugboat named after him, um, he was a PHS veteran. He was um, in the Commission Corps for 12 years. He happened to have gone to Virginia Medical School, but he actually uh, succumbed to uh, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever um, at the age of 38. He, he was just 38 years old, and this was 19, 1911. He died while studying and investigating that disease. Again, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever caused by a bacteria. Um, and so, again, silent in the background and to um, Rosenau's point, bacteria are as deadly as bullets. Um, and and, and this, this officer, uh, Thomas B. McClintock, died from those bacteria. And um, he had the courage to investigate something that we didn't know about, that, we, that couldn't be seen, and he put himself on the line. So I think having uh, a situation like this in mind is very important to think about. The idea of healthcare professionals being heroes is not a new one. Um, it was really thrust into the general public consciousness in our society uh, during World War One because everybody who was working in healthcare um, now had to deal with this great pandemic. Um, so this was in 1918. You know, all the health professionals now had to step up and, and fight this disease. But the reality is, the Public Health Service Commission Corps has had this idea of sacrificing oneself and being a hero for for fighting for health since its inception, at least uh, since 1889, the core actually started, you know, the legislation in 1889 made the core official, but there were officers that had started before 1889. So, so this idea of being a hero and fighting for health and, and fighting the war against disease um, really is baked in with the commission core. So, um, and, and that's really the value of having a uniformed health service, right? Um, and I, and I hope more people understand that value, um, more Americans understand that value, because we used to understand that more, uh, and it's kind of faded away. So 
I don't think we can ever downplay the sacrifice and courage that it takes to go to war and just really apples and oranges. It's really hard to compare that versus fighting a deadly disease like Ebola, um, you know, going into something unknown like that and putting yourself um, in those situations to save other people and prevent other people from getting sick. Um, so it's nearly impossible to compare that hero heroism of fighting a deadly disease that's unknown versus somebody who's going into battle and facing getting shot at and bombs and it's just a totally different different scenario i don't even think it's worth uh trying to compare the two so um i just think that the public health service is unique in that they have a history of serving with the armed forces as well as um serving in uniform going where they're needed to fight these deadly diseases that we don't know about and they've they've died um, while doing that. So hope you enjoyed this little um, tidbit about Memorial Day and how the core fits into that. Thanks for listening.